Hello lovelies, hello family, and welcome. Welcome to my channel. Um, let's get started, you guys. First of all, I wanted to take you over here to my website. Uh, this is Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center. Um, this is my page. And what I'm going to do is um, share with you all what we do. Um, it says here, we utilize a blended approach in our practice to stimulate the mind, body, and spirit. The modality we use is our personal centered a therapy, solution set focus, therapy, psychoeducational intervention, cognitive behavior therapy, hypnotherapy, interpersonal therapy, and art therapy. We offer affordable in person telehealth services. And we also accept insurance as well. This is the Psychology Essence page, uh, my page, and the uh, Purpose Counseling and Wellness page. And give us a call today. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today, I want to talk about Horace. Horace King. This is part two. Um, unfortunately, I did part one and I got disconnected. This is my Instagram page, you guys. Y'all might want to check it out and um, also subscribe to my Instagram as well. This is Horace Grant. I want to show a picture of you guys because I did um, start on talking about him and i wanted to continue and unfortunately the other video it got cut off because i had too many screens open <laughs> but this time i have less screens so hopefully this time um nothing freezes up and i can go through this whole lecture with you all but anyway i wanted to share with you all an um another journal article because i was sort of fascinated about the article that I was talking about before um, about how Horace King, he's an engineer. A lot of people know him for his bridges. I'm going to go back over here. Let's see. Let's close this out. I wanted to show the bridge. I believe I have it here on my Instagram. Here's Stone Mountain. That's the bridge. Now that's where how it looked prior to um it being carved and here is his bridge this is the bridge i was telling you about and um this is the bridge that um king horace king had built and engineered and it's uh was placed here at stone mountain and so this is an excellent example of history um being shared with the bridge that he built. And I want to make sure I show you guys one of his bridges. I got a chance to walk across the bridge uh, doing a hiking with my family. And I think in the picture, this is my um, family walking across the bridge, but, <laughs> but we were walking down the bridge. Um, and it was a wonderful experience walking over the bridge, over the river and Stone Mountain. Uh, it's, it's like a wonderful piece of history that we get a chance to cherish and and this is one of the bridges that uh, Horace King had designed and developed and is still holding up to this very day um, which I was very fascinated about but let's get on to the article this article I wanted to share with you all uh, was about how Horace King was very knowledgeable he was not just knowledgeable in being, building bridges, but he was also knowledgeable about um, natural remedies, about um, medicine, um, pretty much about yeah, medicine that's um, oftentimes being used to this very day by the indigenous people, um, by the, um, the American Aborigines, the natives. But anyway, this article was published in the British Medical uh, Journal, and it was published in 1883, pages 448 through 450. And we're going to go to page 448 about the treatment of syphilis, and it's by J. Myron Sims, M.D. 
And so I wanted to read this article because it goes more into further detail about the uh, fact uh, that Horace King taught physicians, uh, the European Caucasian physicians, the proper way of treating the syphilis by the indigenous people. And it's an ancient remedy that's been passed down. I wouldn't say remedy, I, I said medical <laughs> science. It's been passed down. We need to give credit to our ancestors for all the knowledge and the wisdom that they have passed down um, to modern, you know, that we're, that's oftentimes being used to this modern day. But it says here, more than 40 years ago, I practiced medicine in Montgomery County, Alabama, near Creek Nation of Indians. Syphilis was very prevalent among them, and their medicine men had the reputation of speedily curing it. This, the, their remedies were, of course, um, docotations doc of um, native herbs. Sorry, I can barely see that. It was generally, let me see if I can explain these. Here we go, we can explain this a little bit bigger. It okay, it was generally known that Queen's Delight uh, Stillinger and uh, Savita was one of their principal agents. I have supposed that when this tribe was removed west of the Mississippi in 1837, the secret of curing syphilis had gone with them. But when I was in Alabama last year, I learned from my brother-in-law Dr. B. Rush Jones of Montgomery, the following facts touching this question. See, that, and then this is during the Indian Removal Act, you guys, too. They mentioned how they moved the Indians off of their homeland. But some still stayed. You know, and um, Horace King is one of the examples. Some of the Indians, you know, even though it wasn't, he wasn't Creek, but he was associated with them. Um, some of the Indians still stayed, you know? And it seems like a lot of the ones that stayed ended up being slaves. That is oftentimes not mentioned, but it's the truth. Um, if you go back and look at earlier writings, you see that there's a pattern in that. And it says here, there were, he said, seven or eight years before our Civil War, several obstinate cases of secondary syphilis in and around Montgomery, which resist from the usual remedies in the hands of our best physicians. They went the round of the doctors and would not be cured. At last, one of these were advised to consult a colored man, lost and belonging to Mr. N.D. Barnett, a cotton planter residing in Montgomery County. In a state of despair, he went to see Lawson, but put himself under his treatment. In a few weeks, he was perfectly cured. He returned to town, rejoicing at his recovery, and some others of his fellow sufferers followed his example and went to consult the colored man. Lawson were likewise cured. These cures by the obscure Negro man, a slave, when the highest representatives of science have failed were much spoken of by town and country and attracted the attention of Dr. Medade, a very intelligent and accomplished physician whom I've known since the early boyhood. Mr. Medade feelings of the greatest interest in the subject and he went in to see Lawson and who had made these marvelous cures and obtained them from the formula he had been using successfully. See, they got a lot from the indigenous people, the aborigines, and, and it's unfortunate that a lot of the stuff that they um, derive, you know, the greys, the Caucasians, um, derived from the aborigines, which are us, um, they take credit for it. You see that in medical medicine, medical school, a lot of the stuff, medicine, medicine man, all of that is indigenous. I come here from the people of color, um, the Negroes, and also from the natives as well, uh, the, um, the Mongoloid Indians as well. And 
you know, and oftentimes we don't get recognition for it. And, um, but it's, but you know, it's just, it's great to hear and learn about this piece of history and how much, you know, our people actually done a lot and um, how a lot of the stuff that's being used today in schools and everything actually come from the indigenous people here and oftentimes not, you know, recognized and also oftentimes pushed and shown and kept out of these schools to learn, you know, the indigenous ways, you know, uh, and then sometimes the naturopathic ways are also oftentimes pushed aside as well uh, because they don't want to be used by modern science for some reason. But that's a whole nother ball game. <laughs> you know, I can go on and on, and guys. But it says here, um, soon after Dr. McKay did, uh, happened to meet Dr. James Finney, he gave him the following history of the so-called Indian method of treating syphilis. Horace King, a mulatto slave, uh, which was pretty much American Aborigine, reside among the Creek Indians because he, he was um, an Indian. He's um, a Catawba Indian, so he's an indigenous person as well. And he said here, slaves resided among the Creek Indians for several years before they were moved west of the Mississippi in 1837 and had learned from them the method of treating syphilis. When Horace was engaged in building the bridge of Tallahassee, a mile 25 miles from Montgomery in 1952, he learned that there were many cases of syphilis of Mr. Gibson's plantation nearby and that Dr. Finney and Banks were the attending physicians. And he called Dr. Finney and told him that he had learned a method of treating syphilis from the Creek Indians, which was universally successful. And he would like to show on the Gibson plantation for the experiment, which is unfortunate. He's using the slaves as mini pigs, in other words, but it's already been proven on the Indians. They already knew it worked. But it says here, um, Dr. Finney and Bain selected a certain number of bad cases and turned them over to Horace. And they watched him for a day to day, uh, his method, while they continued their own plan with other cases. See, they, they continued their own plans. And as it says here, Horace has selected bad cases recover more rapidly than Dr. Finney's milder ones. <coughs> Then Dr. Vinay adopted the Indian method and the other cases on the Gibson plantation and has been pursued on any other plantation since. And then so, and it says here, the Indian method in other cases of the Gibson plantation has not been pursued in any other plan since. So they pretty much followed the indigenous um, remedies and once they realized that it was very effective in healing the um, the um, the slaves, so I just wanted to share this um, particular article with you guys. Um, Y'all may want to check this out because this is additional evidence of how effective uh, the indigenous um, and the ancients remedies were in curing uh, different elements and how a lot of medicine um, is being used by the indigenous people to this very day. And um, a lot of natural remedies also being used as well, that's not being publicized, you know? But, you know, that would be an interesting study, you know, something, you know, interesting to look into about, you know, what medicines that the, the indigenous people had already derived prior to colonization, prior to the grays coming over here, and how and what medicines they took and used uh, in medicine to this very day, and how, and also to see, is, are they giving credit to where it come from? You know, it'll be interesting to learn more about that, you know, but if y'all have any more information about this and about um, Horace King, um, please leave your comment below. 
And in this video, we're going to go over some more information about Horace King. And, uh, but this is, I'm going to leave it at this particular video um, on Horace King. Um, I'm going to stop here with the bridge. And um, I think we're going to continue and talk more about uh, him and his career. But uh, we're going to stop here. And I would love to hear what you all think about this video. Um, please like this video and thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, love and peace, family. Bye-bye.